Hello, my name is David Brown. I'm the Diversity Advisor to the Office of the Dean of Klein College of Media and Communications here at Temple University. And we have some very special guests to have a very important conversation about black excellence and leadership. We have us, with us this morning Jim Kenney, the Mayor of the City of Philadelphia, Dr. Jason Wingard, our President of Temple University, Arthur Johnson, Temple University's Athletic Director, Aaron McKee, Temple Men's Basketball Coach, Tonya Cardoza, Temple Women's Basketball Coach, and Stan Drayton, Temple Head Football Coach. I'm also pleased to introduce Nefertiri Seco, City of Philadelphia's Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer, who will help lead us in this important conversation about black excellence during Black History Month. Thank you, David. Higher education institutions like Temple represent some of the city's largest and most influential organizations. They employ thousands of residents, educate generations of students, and represent some of the city's biggest economic forces. In thinking about commemorating Black History Month, we recognize that Temple is the only school, football, bowl, subdivision school in the country to have a black president, a black athletics director, and black coaches in football, men and women's basketball. That is a phenomenal accomplishment and we are glad to celebrate it and recognize it here today. And thinking about having diversity in the leadership bench, we know that a lot of organizations still struggle to achieve inclusive leadership. But research has shown that inclusive leadership not only improves performance, but it also improves outcomes. We at the city, under Mayor Kenney's leadership, have um, been very uh, uh, grateful for Mayor Kenney uplifting diversity, equity, and inclusion as a strategic priority in the administration. Mayor Kenney, can you share uh, your perspective on, on prioritizing diversity, equity, and inclusion? Well, I think it's, it's required because we live in a diverse city. Um, the city sh leadership and employment should reflect the city as it is. Um, and, uh, you know, and I know that sounds crazy being a white mayor in a majority black city, but I do believe that if you, if you have to be intentional in your approach to this, you have to make sure that every department head, every person in government thinks about racial equity and looking through that lens all the time when it comes to hiring, when it comes to contracting. Uh, you, need, you need to try to balance the unfairness that's gone on for 400 years in this country. Uh, and if we can do it as a city or as a nation, uh, we'll all be better off for it. And, you know, we, we deal with struggle with poverty. We struggle with the results of poverty, which is crime and other things. Uh, we, can, we could fix all that if we just were more equitable in the distribution of our resources uh, to every part of the city and to every person in the city. Uh, that's why I think Temple is so important. Uh, it is the bastion of North Philadelphia. It's the bastion of Philadelphia. I mean, my daughter my daughter graduated here, um, and it's just a, it's an institution that you depend on to always kind of be there and be that stabilizing force and educating our young people, uh, and um, it's just a great institution. So. Thank you, Mayor Kenny, and I, I would just also add that you actually established yeah. the city's first ever Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, um, and really put that on a map as an imperative in, in city government. And it's it's sometimes it's a struggle. People don't always think in those terms, and they don't always. And I don't know if it's even consciously avoiding it or consciously pushing back against it. I still think they think through um, what the effects of those decisions are. And what, and what improvements we could make as a society and as a city if we did the right things. Mm -hmm. It definitely requires intentionality. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Dr. Wingard, uh, as Temple's president, most notably the first African-American president in 137-year history of Temple University, I mean, you embody diversity, equity, and inclusion, but can you talk a little bit about how that affects and how important that is in higher education? Yeah, David, thank you. The, for about 70 years, over 70 years in this country, higher education has been the foundation for success, professional success. If you have the opportunity to go to college, then you can realize the American dream of getting a good job, having a good house, taking care of your family, and being a very integral part of this economic society. If you don't have access to higher education, then that American dream is much harder to attain. And so when we talk about diversity and inclusion in this country, going back through history all the way through to the present, we have to realize the context that a very privileged few 
have had access to higher education. That has been the economically privileged, that has been the racially privileged white, and so everybody else, particularly the black and brown communities, have had a very difficult time being able to, being able to provide access to uh, higher education, which in turn allows them to be uh, you know, meaningful members of society professionally. And so when we talk about diversity in higher education, and specifically in Philadelphia, the city of Philadelphia that the mayor is talking about, and Temple University in this community, it's important for us to realize that our mission here at Temple is all about access. It's about providing the broadest access to whoever wants to learn, being able to achieve excellence in the delivery of that education, and then allowing the people who attend this school to be able to be gainfully employed, meaningful members of the city, of the region, of the country, of the world. And so it's just important that we demonstrate here in the city of Philadelphia and at Temple University that diversity matters. We know that it matters in research in corporate America. If you have a diverse leadership staff and a diverse membership within your organization, you will be more profitable. We recognize that in higher education, if you have diverse faculty, if you have diverse leadership, if you have a diverse student body, the learning experience will be much better. And so we here at Temple University are committed to diversity because of the data, because of the moral responsibility, because of our mission, because of the economic and social value that it provides to this city and to the region and to the world. Thank you, Dr. Wingard. And one of the first hires that you made, an intentional, was uh, Mr. Arthur Johnson is our athletic director. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that before I pose a question to, to Mr. Johnson about the intentionality of that, of that decision. Yeah, absolutely. So making decisions as leaders in organizations is really important. The foundation of our mission and of my vision for Temple University is that we are going to engage with the community in a better way than Temple ever has before. Mayor Kenny just spoke about the placement of Temple University in North Philadelphia, a predominantly black and brown community, is noteworthy. And in order for us to be able to engage with the community, it's important to have some leaders, the president, the athletic director, other members of the faculty, deans, et cetera, who are people of color so that we can have a balanced approach to how we engage with our faculty, our students, and the community members. And so when we were choosing an athletic director, obviously we wanted the best athletic director we could find with the best credentials, the best experience, the best fit culturally and academically and athletically for Temple University. We found that in Arthur Johnson. He happens to be African American. It was important to me to make sure that we provided him the opportunity and we provided ourselves the opportunity and benefit to have our, an African American athletic director for all the reasons that I just mentioned. Absolutely. And we're glad to have him here. Yes, and we certainly are, Mr. Johnson. So if you wouldn't mind, just expound a little bit on making the decision to bring your family here to build on the legacy of success that we've had here at Temple and what you see going forward. Uh, well, first of all, thank you and welcome to the Leo Coors Center and welcome to campus. When my wife and I were looking at it, we were looking at a, looking for a community that was very diverse. That we have a 10 year old son, Aaron, who um, is growing up, he's been in this athletics world and within athletics, we've really been privileged and fortunate that when we go out and recruit, uh, race really didn't matter, but you went out to find the best people. But he was also in an environment where with some sports and in some settings, it was not as diverse as we wanted it to be. However, when we were looking at the cities, uh, we were looking for a city and then I knew the history of Philadelphia. I knew the, the racial makeup of the community. Had a lot of, with me growing up in South Georgia and spending a lot of time in the Atlanta area, Philadelphia was always compared to Atlanta. And so it was very important for me, for him to be able to see this kind of environment, having a, a African-American or black president in a leadership role. Uh, we were fortunate to have a couple of black coaches at the University of Texas that he got to see um, them in those positions, but I also wanted him to see a much broader community and see some of the uh, black excellence in throughout other areas of society, with whether it's in civic, whether it's a law and education, and other areas. With our three coaches here, Coach Aaron McKee, men's basketball coach, Coach Tanya Cardoza, women's basketball, and Coach Stan Drayton, head football coach, 
Can you also share your perspective on diverse representation and leadership, especially as it relates to the legacy of success that has come to define both the city and Temple University? It's, it's important. When we talk about diversity. The one thing I always think about is, you know, if I was to ask the mayor here, what do you want for your kids? Because whatever you want for your kids is the same thing that I want. I want for mine. And that's the, the mentality that we all should have, and we don't. We talk about diversity um, in an athletics pro in a university and athletics program, and I think this is great. This is the anomaly here where we have a black president, black athletic director, head football coach, women's basketball coach, men's basketball coach. There need to be more of a conversation from the top, you know, from the top down to the bottom and the, and the board meetings and, and, and everything else that, that we're involved in. And when we start to have those real conversations, you look around this city here, a place that we all love. And, you know, I grew up here, spent all my life here. For the most part, you look at poverty, you look at education. We, everybody needs to collectively sit down and have these conversations and really address the diversity that needs to happen. Because I'm sure all your kids and, and everybody kids that's on this panel, we all want private school for them. We all want the best things in life for them, and we all shouldn't have to struggle the way that we struggle. But it's a start here, and hopefully people get a chance to lay eyes on this, and, and we start to make change collectively. And just to piggyback off of that, um, you know, just being in leadership roles when you look around here, um, other cultures or other races, they hire within their race, and so, for us, when we have opportunities, that's the same thing that I feel like we need to do. I think that only helps our our um, communities if we hire within. Um, obviously, making sure that they're uh, they're um, knowledgeable, but I feel like we need to make sure that we continue to uh, branch out and stick uh, uh, stay um, in tune and make sure that we're doing what we need to do for our community. Yeah, it's extremely important for our youth, and they need to have a visual of, of what uh, diversity means, what it looks like. They need to be able to see people looking like them uh, have opportunities like this. You know, when you look at the, the pure percentages of, of, of people in our three sports, for example, there's a, a large percentage of African Americans that play these sports, right? All right, but then the ratio between um, uh, the, 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 the minorities that play the sports and the people who are actually coaching the sports, there's a, there's a disconnect there, right? You know, so uh, I think it's extremely important not only for the community to see it, but the athletes, the youth, to be able to see that, yes, we can play these sports, but we can also play them at a high level under leadership that looks like us. If we can play the sport, then why can't we coach the sport? Why can't we lead the sport, you know? So I think it's extremely important for for people of, of the nation to see this panel here. I'm still undefeated as a football coach. I haven't played a game yet, you know. But I'm sitting next to two highly successful coaches that are operating at a high level, that are leading young people and uh, preparing them for life, you know, uh, after their sport. Um, there's no reason why people should not understand that that can happen from leadership that looks like us. Uh, I share the same legacy of being a lifelong proud Philadelphian, a lifelong Philadelphian. Uh, so I want to uh, pose a question to, to, to the mayor uh, as a son of a firefighter uh, who has done a, a great deal, even from, uh, from your background. What, one, motivated you to pursue this high office, uh, but also how do you keep putting Philadelphia onto the world stage? Because that's who we're competing against. Talk to us a little bit about that. I think you have to look at Philadelphia history, too. I remember when my father first went into the fire department, I think in 1960. Um, we still had a segregated firehouse uh, at uh, 6th and South. Um, we had a, a history, and we have a history, of severe segregation. I mean, I think Jackie Robinson's worst city to play in was Philadelphia. Um, and, and a lot of that bastion of racism and, and other things still, still exist. I mean, I grew up in a neighborhood where the N-word was, was not an uncommon word. And, and thankfully, my parents kept us so kind of away from that. You were not allowed to use that language in our house. My mom, even relatives, would, my mom would say, that comes out of your mouth one more time, you're out of here. Uh, so they kept us from that ugliness and that hatred because racism is not 
is not bo you're not born with it. I mean, you see you see kids of, of different na different races, different nationalities. They interact with each other when they're in pre-K. It's like not even even know what 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 race is about. That is a learned racism is a learned trait, uh, and you have to have people teach you that. Um, so I think that. What, what kind of inspired me to be in public service is that I, I was Jesuit educated, so I had that person for others kind of in, inoculation. Uh, and, um, and, and actually having an opportunity to change someone's life in a positive way. I mean, I look at these coaches here in, in the AD, you have a chance to actually turn a person's life into something productive and you can see it and follow it for the rest of your life. And that actually makes you feel that you've accomplished something. So. Sometimes when I get frustrated with the big picture where I can't control everything, I try to reach out and deal with people in a one-to-one -one situation. So there's a, there's a group of young men that I'll mentor, young women I'll mentor, and you, you just try to help them. Because mm -hmm. every, every life that you change and you help uh, to become better, they make scores of other people's lives better. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why this frustration with our gun violence and, and our violence that we're experiencing I just wish they could understand that they're breaking their mother's heart. They're breaking their family's heart. Uh, the person who's, who's killed is gone. The person who did it is gone too. Uh, and, and, and that's, I guess, that's what I struggle with uh, and try to fix. And sometimes, it, especially in the last two years, with the pandemic and with the civil unrest and with Trump and all the other stuff, it's just been sometimes overwhelming. So you try to isolate a couple people that you actually can see you've been productive with, mm -hmm. uh, and that keeps you going. Yeah, and how does that also elevate us to be a competitive city, not, you know, it, on, particularly on the world stage, where so many different opportunities that are still yet ahead of us? Yeah, I mean, I, we, I, Philadelphia is what Philadelphia, it's not, I can't, we always get compared to New York or Boston or D.C. It's Philly's Philly. Yeah. I mean, Philly, Philly, and I keep on thinking of Coach Cheney. Coach to me was as Philadelphian as you can be. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like he's totally a Philly person and had such an impact on, on the lives of yep. these people. Um, and um, so if you just want to leave the world a better place than you found it when you came in, into the world, um, and uh, hopefully it, we do that. Absolutely. And, and Dr. Wingard, I think this is a perfect segue as president of Temple University, making us and continuing to keep us on the world stage as a world-class university. Talk to us a little bit about how you're looking to do that, particularly given the office that you hold yeah. and the person who you are. Sure, so I spoke earlier about Temple's mission around access. Yeah. It's important that we open the doors figuratively and for real mm -hmm. uh, to have a much more inclusive and diverse community. And that includes our students and our faculty, our coaches, all the leaders, uh, so that the community is as diverse as possible. In order for that to be realized, though, in order for that to be successful, we need two things. So number one, we need a pipeline of learners. And number two, we need partnership around placement of the students who graduate from the university. So I'll take the first one first. A pipeline means you can't admit students who aren't prepared to come here. We can have aspirations that we want a diverse community of learners here at Temple University, but if our public school system has not prepared students to be qualified to take advantage of the education here, then we can't admit what's not prepared to be here. Mm -hmm. So we need to partner with the city, partner with the school district, partner with other organizations to make sure from the time when those students, as Mayor just said, are in pre-K mm -hmm. all the way through 12th grade, that they are getting the quality education, the access to resources that they need so that they can be prepared for an education at a place like Temple University so that we can then take the baton and make sure that they have the experience that they need here at Temple, diverse and excellent and otherwise, so they can go out into the world. Which leads me to my second point, which is it does us no good to do all of that work from K to 12 mm -hmm. and to do all that work in the higher education time period that we have four or more years here if they can't get a job. Mm. And so it's important that we partner with the organizations in this region and in this nation and around the world so that they are prepared to take the students that we have prepared really well academically and through extracurricular activities mm -hmm. to be able to get these jobs. And if we have an increased number of diverse students in our school population, then we have to work extra hard to make sure that those students also have the same professional opportunities as the majority. Mm -hmm. And so it's our responsibility as a university to not just teach and learn, it's to prepare the pipeline, 
It's to increase diversity. It's to establish partnerships so that our students can go out into the world and get gainful employment and be the engine of the future of work that Temple can be responsible for. I was actually you know, listening and reflecting on your answer and the mayor's earlier. We, we're dealing with uh, structural and institutional racism. And it, it pre-existed the Kenny administration. Um, and we've been very intentional about trying to dismantle policies and procedures and practices that continue to perpetuate uh, disparities in, in outcomes. But it's, it's difficult, you know, it's not easy. Um, and it, it requires partnership, the partnership that you just spoke about, right? It's not just on any one particular institution to try to uh, break down these barriers that have been, you know, existing for hundreds of years. Um, just in thinking about, about that and the frustration and focusing on that personal one-to-one -one impact, um, I'm just wondering from our coaches and athletic director, if you could share uh, what you've seen in terms of the students that you work with and how, you know, you touch them individually and, and help support them overcoming some of the adversity that they've experienced in their life, helping them to become more su su successful, not only in the game, but also um, in their life after sports. I'm a living example of what you just spoke of, right? And I know it works. But there's a lot of things that come with it and has to happen before that. Um, Coach Cheney was a, just a mentor, just a father figure um, to me, and he gave me an opportunity. But with that opportunity, um, you need a foundation. And what most of these kids around here don't have is a foundation. Foundation mean family, mother, father, aunt, uncle, grand, whoever. Uh, coaches and mentors and so when you have someone with a foundation they're teachable they're coachable and now you can start to shape the clay and, and mold those kids um, secondly you have to develop a work ethic anything that you do that involves success starts with your work ethic it's, it's the reason why all of us are sitting up here right now this is it's, we're not reinventing the wheel and lastly, it's, it's our passion. When you tie that work ethic in with the passion, there's no price tag you can put on any of us that can keep us away from what we want to do in life because we're driven by passion. And it's what a lot of these kids don't have. So as coaches, when we get these kids out of high school, we're asked to undo 16, 17, 18 years of bad behavior. And how do you do that? Without a foundation, without a work ethic. We have to stabilize them and give them a foundation, which is coaching and teaching every day. It's not easy. I have a young team. Um, I go through it every day. We have to, in an indirect way, give them a work ethic. And part of what we do as coaches, the work ethic is you're up 7 in the morning. You got breakfast. You're lifting weights, OK? You have practice. After practice, you got study hall. After study hall, you you know you got probably more classes. You go to bed, you get back up, and you do it again the next day. That's part of the work ethic. And if those kids have any passion, they could be successful at whatever it is they want to want to be in because we developed all the skills they need to be successful at. But it starts with a foundation, and it starts with the work ethic. To Coach's point, that foundation, sometimes that's not awarded to them, right? And, you know, I think when you hold these positions, the very first thing you do when you have that, that opportunity to grab these kids and put them under a program is to make sure they're not using that as an excuse. Like, there are events that have happened, for sure, in their upbringing that they cannot control, right? But at this level, we're giving them an opportunity to change the narrative. So how they respond to, how they respond to those events, you know, it's either up or down, right? You can, you can sit there and, and wallow and and, and uh, the adverse situations, all right? Or you can sit there and look at those adverse situations and build from it, use it as a positive, use it as a catapult to change the narrative, you know? So I think it's very special and unique in our position that we have that opportunity to sit there and say, okay, hey, I know where you're from. I've been there. I am from the same demographic that you're from, you know? But we can sit here and use that as an excuse or we can put ourselves in position to change it, 
you know, and we have these opportunities in these roles to give them the mindset that give them still the confidence that you can change it. Just look at us. You know, we're holding leadership roles. You think it just came walking through a field of roses? No, we got beat up along the way. You know, we had to fight through some things. And if we sit there and we, you know, live on just the, 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 uh, the negative mindset of, or, or just using our adversities as, as uh, an excuse, then you're not gonna propel forward. So let's tough it out, let's figure it out, all right? And propel forward and then bring others along with us. That's what it's all about. The vast majority of my players have come from adverse situations um, and they're carrying the weight of their shoulders. I mean, they want to succeed not just for themselves, but for their families because, you know, a lot of their families are depending on them. And so they come here with hopes that, you know, they're helping their family situation. So um, they're extreme, extremely hard workers and they see people in leadership roles that look a lot like them and that drives them even more, knowing that there's someone that probably came from the same similar situation, um, adverse situations, and if she was able to make it out, maybe that I can do the same. So, um, but like Aaron said, we're trying to shape 17 years of a behavior that may, might not be um, ready for the success, but that's our job as coaches now, as leaders um, to help shape and mold them um, and put them off into the world as, as leaders. I'm thinking that you also have such an incredible responsibility both on and off the field in terms of success and being able to kind of recognize that a lot of our students who come into sports, that's is often sometimes the only way out. How then do we as uh, the Temple University provide the type of environment that one, attracts these tremendous coaches, attracts you, uh, and attracts high-level students who want to succeed both on the field and off the field. I think it starts with the opportunity and it, we have a tremendous obligation just as role models just when you're in certain positions in certain roles especially people of color you're always on that stage and you're always being watched so even when you don't have an opportunity to get to know someone personally they see you so your behavior has to be one to show them hey this can be done then you work to build relationships and talk about the adverse situations from this leadership roles I get to lead our programs and look at what policies and procedures and what types of programs uh, we want to have how kids are treated how kids uh, how we react to things that may happen trying to understand what their backgrounds are I've always uh, spoke to parents in the past about, okay, we won't treat everyone equally. We'll treat everyone fairly. With all of our student athletes, they come from different backgrounds, diff different backgrounds, different experiences. And based on those experiences, we have to make our decisions at times based on that. Uh, these people on the panel, especially our coaches and uh, President Wingard, They've had a chance to meet and visit with my wife and me. So there are certain things they should expect from my son. Um, every young person, that's, every 10 year old doesn't have the same advantages that my son has. So at times he might and should not get the same treatment uh, for the same type of mistake that someone who hasn't had a chance to grow and learn and having grace at times and trying to help them grow and develop so that they get the next generation in their families prepared and move beyond that. Yeah, thank you for that. You're talking about equity when you talk about fairness, because that's, you know, we talk about diversity uh, uh, in terms of representation. We talk about inclusion, you know, having uh, uh, the diverse representation plus the culture of inclusiveness. And when we talk about equity, we really are talking about fairness and we're talking about outcomes. Um, so I really, you know, like what you spoke to. Mayor Kenny, in, in, you know, having worked alongside you and, and thinking about equity, you've really, you know, changed the narrative in city government. Um, among, we have about 25,000 employees and, and we are, you know, pushing equity into the organization. Um, it, it's definitely, you know, difficult 
Um, um, it's not easy, it's not intuitive. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what you think other institutions uh, should be doing to really advance equity into their uh, organization? Well, I think what was previously been discussed about opportunity, mm -hmm. the city has a great opportunity, great um, position to bring that equity to little kids' lives all across the city. I mean, our investments that we've made in pre-K, our investments we've made in our rec centers and our libraries, I mean, you know, if you're living in a struggling neighborhood uh, and, you're, and your rec center's falling down around you and your library's le roof's leaking and the windows are, are drafty and the books are getting wet, you don't feel like anyone really cares about you or cares about your worth. So we've been really intentional in trying to make those investments in facilities, in neighborhoods, where kids feel like they're valued mm -hmm. uh, and they feel like they can be safe and that they can go to a place where they can experience volunteer coaches in various sports, uh, especially in sports where they're not really have access to. I think one of the one of the greatest things about this country was Title IX when when Title IX was passed and, and it equalized you know f funding f scholarship funding for women. On top of it, so many opportunities for our kids to 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 row crew, to play lacrosse, to play field hockey, to do the things that kids in the suburbs get a chance to do all the time. And and having those opportunities, I think, widens kids widens their potential. Uh, it widens their belief that people, their actual government cares about them. Uh, when they go to a high class facility, uh, you know, in, in school, high class rec, high class library, um, and hopefully we try to make the neighborhood even safer by getting these guns off the street. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that's an opportunity to prepare these kids for them. Uh, so that they have an opportunity to come and matriculate at a fine institution like this. I appreciate you saying that. I, um, you know, it, it, we have about 40 departments in, in the city, and right now all of our departments are looking at how they budget with the racial equity lens in terms of how we invest and target our resources, which is what you, you know, just talked about. Um, Dr. Wingard, you know, within Temple, uh, how are you also, you know, pushing equity and, you know, what would you, you alluded to this a little earlier in terms of, you know, it's a shared responsibility. And so, you know, what, what would you want to uplift in terms of some of those, you know, key priorities in, in advancing equity? It starts at the top. It has to, you know, trickle out through the organization. But what, what would you share? It all comes from the strategy at the top, as you mentioned, and as the mayor just mentioned. So we've talked about access. Does, is it a strategy for there to be opportunity for more diversity in teaching and learning and administration and coaching? Yes, it is. That has to be intentionally developed and messaged and managed. Representation. We talked about our coaches, talked about how that matters. Coach Drayton, he mentioned data for Division I athletics at the highest level most of the student athletes who play basketball and football are African American. Most of the coaches are not. Is it important to have representation in your coaching ranks so that those student athletes, many of whom come from underserved and disadvantaged backgrounds, have role models and mentors to look up to to teach them how to be men and women and how to be good athletes? Yes, it is important. We are being intentional about that, so that's the second part of my answer. Transparency. Transparency and action. This is action right here. This represents what we were talking about, right? Um, and then sponsorship is the third one. And so you have a mayor who was sitting here now advocating for Temple University and for diversity at the city level, at the university level, throughout the region with other corporate leaders. You need that kind of leadership sponsorship and mentorship that trickles down throughout the organizations that are involved in the partnerships that you spoke about earlier. So we're doing all of that at Temple University. We're being intentional. We're creating representation. We're being very, very transparent about our strategy of diversity and inclusion. When you model it, when you speak it, then it happens. And then you see what you see here on center court. When you don't model it, when you don't preach it, when you don't put resources behind it, then it's not real and it doesn't happen. And this is why your opening statement about how Temple University is the only FBS school in the country that has a black president, athletic director, and football and basketball coaches is Temple University in the city of Philadelphia it's because we're intentional about it and because we have the support. And nobody else has done it. 
that's the question. Why not? Mm -hmm. Awesome. We really want to thank you all for sharing with us this conference. Very important conversation. We don't often get an opportunity to be in a setting like this to have these types of important dialogues about not only what we're doing, but what others need to do and how we can all continue to move forward. So thank you all for joining Professor, us. Professor, if I could add one, Please, of one, course. La <laughs> one last statement. I, I can't let it go without, a, without one final statement. This is Black History Month. And it's wonderful that we have the opportunity to sit here together in a half circle and talk about what we have been able to accomplish as a region, as a city, as a university. And this is really a special opportunity for us to do that. But I want to underscore that we're also talking about excellence. Okay, so there, we're sitting here at Center Court, at Leah Court Center at Temple, and there's a T for Temple, but it might as well be an E for excellent. Mm -hmm. And it's important for me that our community knows that we are trying to represent excellence at every level. Our coaches represent excellence in athletics, and that's not just winning. That's all preparing our young student athletes to be, again, positive men and women, engaged in the community, engaged in their um, student I mean, and in their uh, uh, academics, and as good, positive members of society. We preach that to our faculty members. You have to be the best faculty teaching and learning uh, that the nation has to offer, that the world has to offer. What you teach, how you teach it, the modalities you use, the curriculum, how it gets intertwined with what the future of work is looking for, that's important at Temple University. So when you're talking about faculty, research, winning on the court and on the field, right, engaging with our community, we are representing definitely excellence. And so when you layer into that, can diversity as a strategic priority enhance excellence and that priority? My answer is yes. I believe that I am excellent. I believe that our athletic director and our coaches are excellent. Yes, we happen to be African American. And yes, we have our colleagues who are white, who are Indian, who are Latino, who come from every race, culture, ethnicity, religion that you can speak of. And we are all excellent together. And it's important for us to remember that you don't have to sacrifice excellence in order to be diverse and satisfy your strategic priorities. Mm -hmm. Exclamation point. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. This is wonderful. Uh, looking forward to this continued, not only conversation, but the work ahead for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. Philadelphia and Temple is all about opportunity. And that's the key about this university. It's about giving people opportunities, providing them uh, the wherewithal and the resources to succeed. And that's what I feel um, Temple has really given to me. And I feel that I've tried to give that back to not only the university, but to all of our students in the College of Public Health, as well as my athletes. You've got so many different um, communities here and so many different cultures, so many different languages, so many different um, perspectives. And I think that's what's so, again, what's so interesting and so valuable about the city is that they're all valued here. Uh, and you see it when you walk through the city, you see it on the murals that are being um, painted on the buildings, you see it um, just in the people and how everyone kind of treats each other and how everyone is, again, we're. We're just kind of all in this together feel, and I really, really enjoy that. And that culture of the city has really resonated with me and my family. What it means to me is that I have a big responsibility uh, to the university, to the people of color like myself, and overall the general population in the Philadelphia area. And I don't, I don't take that lightly because of uh, what Temple means to the Philadelphia community and what it brings to the surrounding areas. So that to build upon what has already happened here it's a huge task to be undertaken, but I'm, I think I'm more than comfortable in, in getting that done. The young women that have come here, uh, some of them are first generation college uh, students, as I was. I was a first generation college student. And so I understand some of that. We have, they come from families who really want the best for them, so they have family support. But they also are, are exploring new ground and for, for them and for their families. But I think we've set the example and we set the tone of success and work, hard work will lead to success. And so uh, when they come here, they're, engro in, they're engrossed in, in an atmosphere and in an environment that is supporting them to succeed and, they, and to help them overcome any difficulties that they may have. 
And I think that's something that is uh, very special about our program here. I think it's left up to people like myself then to make sure that we are doing the same thing that those people do. Maybe not to the scope that they have done it, but to make sure that we continue carrying on their legacies to kind of help build in regards to not only Temple, but the, the area that we are in. And, and in general, just kind of represent some of the, the people that, that look like us in a, a much better way. But again, we are the ones that also have to get out of our offices and go and go help create those situations to, to help make it better for others as well. When you look at leadership from those terms and you look at the leadership roles that people have, whether they're the president of a university, the athletic director, other coaches in the department, um, I think you, what you see is that their voices are valued. That and because they have those positions, because we can all look up to them and see where they are, and it makes us feel like our voices are valued as well. We are heard, we are seen, and we have and our perspective is valued, and that we can we can contribute to this greater good. We can contribute to their leadership, and we want to uh, because what they have to say and what they are doing and how how they're engaging in the community. Uh, inspires us to all be better.